Hey, thanks for stopping by my channel. In this video, we're going to cover some of the dangers of downloading exploits and running them on your local VM. You're going to hear a lot that you need to read the payloads, read the payloads, understand the code. And you may be thinking, I don't understand the code. I don't know how to write code. I'm not able to read code. So I want to show you some of the most dangerous things you need to be looking out for when you're downloading payloads and you're going to be executing them on your local machine, trying to get access to a vulnerable server that you're attacking. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Okay, so we're gonna start out with the remove files. This is probably the most common danger you're going to come across in downloading and running an exploit. And just so you know what we're talking about, if we touch test.txt and we ls, we'll now have the test.txt. And if we remove test, we can remove that file. But you can also remove directories with the rm just like this. So if we make a directory and instead of users we're going to say just test and then we ls we now have this directory and if we want to remove this test and we hit enter it tells us we cannot because it is a directory which means we need to remove recursively so if we type in dash r and now we put in the test it will now remove that directory for us so this is the remove command and you're also going to see dash rf a lot and this is remove forcefully and so it doesn't prompt you do you want to remove files if you run this f it is just going to go ahead and remove them if you run it with a sudo. So you might be wondering where is the danger inside the remove function? And the danger can be inside of payloads, there will be a remove dash RF and then something like tilde and then the file like users or some other file and they're just going to start deleting stuff off of your Kali VM. And this, of course, is not something that you want to come across. So when you're reading through exploits, you can read to see if there is going to be this remove. And you're going to see this clean right here. It's to clean off your payloads and all the files you're creating on the vulnerable machine because you want to leave machines in the same state you find them, especially if you're doing like a penetration test. But sometimes you'll come across a payload that is not on exploit DB, which I believe is managed by offensive security. But if you come across a payload that is just on Google on some random website, which is really common, and it's going to say that it's going to pull off an exploit and it might or it might not, there are some payloads that will just start removing files on your machine. And one way to test for this is if you're in here and you go to remove a file and it says you need sudo permission missions to remove the file then that is going to be a clue that you should not run that payload as sudo because it's asking for the root users permissions to go ahead and delete files that are going to be sensitive so if you ever see a remove you need to make sure and read what is going on what it's wanting to remove make sure that the payload is actually creating the files that it says it's going to be removing and they're not actually files that you need on your operating system a second danger that you're going to be susceptible to as a new or aspiring penetration tester or bug bounty hunter is inside of payloads you may see it trying to open up a specific port on your local VM or it is trying to create a user or do something fishy like that. So I went ahead and created a Python file for us to look at so we can open this up. Whenever you see something like import OS in Python and I can't remember exactly what it is in C but it's going to be something along these lines of import or use some kind of system. When you see something like this this is going to run a command from the operating system. So it's going to run a command like echo running program from the terminal. So if we save this and close this, and then we just type in our Python file.py, it tells us it's running the program. When you go to Google and you find something that's claiming to be a payload, if it imports this OS, make sure to read what it is doing. So if I come in here and I decide I want to run another OS command like just run something simple like an ls and we save this it will now run and tell us that it's running the program and then it's going to list the files so it tells us here's the files and here's the directory and just so you see it if we run ls you can see they're right here 
and it is possible inside of a Python file to run something like a sudo apt install and then a UFW which is going to open up ports and then it might say OS system and then a sudo ufw allow ssh i'm not really sure if that's the right syntax but something along these lines and it's going to open up port 22 on your local vm and then maybe there is something like create a new user in the file somewhere now often it's not going to be this simple there, it's going to be obfuscated. It's going to have a bunch of lines of code, like probably 500 lines of code. And this is going to be sprinkled in throughout the script that you're looking to run. And so you need to be on guard and reading the exploits that you are downloading off the internet. Another one that you might see, and you should definitely be aware of, is if you see something like a bash dash I, and this is going to look really familiar to you if you've done any kind of penetration testing. And then you have the dev dash TCP, and then the IP address, and then a port number. You need to be thinking this might be running on your local machine and trying to connect back to some kind of attack machine that's just listening, waiting for someone to run the payload so that they can have access to your files. Also, beware of like Netcat and other ways that you can be getting reverse shells. So these are going to be some of the most dangerous payloads you're going to come across when you are new to penetration testing or bug bounty hunting. And you need to make sure you are reading through the programs so, so that you don't actually delete all the files on your VM or get hacked yourself. Okay, so the point of me showing you all of that is to help reinforce that you really need to be reading the exploits that you're going to be executing on your local machine. Otherwise, you will eventually catch yourself in trouble by accidentally running some kind of malicious code on your own operating system that you really don't want to be running and you're going to end up with a bunch of deleted files or somebody else is going to have access to your local machine. So happy hacking and be safe.